Today I want to demonstrate um, how I hand cut dovetail. Just to start up, let's look at what I'm going to refer, be referring to as a tail board. So the board with the tails cut into it and a pin board which has got or what we call pins. So that's basically, I'll leave that on the bench so you can just, so you know what I'm talking about when I'm talking tailboard and pinboard, if I actually refer to it. Okay. So I'm just starting, we're just gonna do one joint. So I've got a couple of pieces of wood. Um, and what I wanna do is, first of all, the way I cut my dovetails is I cut the tailboard first. And for accuracy, I use that tailboard to mark the pinboard. So I've got these two pieces of wood here. Um, they're being dressed parallel, square, cut square to the end, so I don't need to do that um, now. And because I'm going to, we're gonna sort of, the joint's gonna run on this corner here, I'm, I'm gonna run flush here and flush here. What I wanna do is set up a marking gauge. So here we've got a wheel type marking gauge. And both of these pieces of wood are the same thickness. So if I had two different different thickness piece of wood, pieces of wood, then I would be setting two marking gauges, one for the thinner piece, one for the thicker piece. But because they're the same, we can just run off one marking gauge for this purpose. So I'm just gonna lay that gauge out so that the knife, this circular knife on the end, is flush with the thickness there. So that's pretty good there. Now the other thing that I want to do, and I think this is the most critical um, part of laying out dovetails or laying out any type of joint, is to mark which is the face of the piece of timber and which is the edge that we're going to use. So the way that I was taught as an apprentice to mark out a face, I choose my preferred face, this is my face, put an F on that, and then a little arrow which points to the edge that I'm going to use. Do the same on the other piece. So I don't think it really matters, but let's mark this face, face, face edge, there. Now, it doesn't matter where you mark them, it's just that you need to know where they're going to go. So in this case, I'm going to put the face, say this was a draw, and what am I going to see when I open the drawer? Well, it's going to be the inside of the drawer. So my face faces are going to be the, on the inside of the joint. So I'm going to lay them on the inside here and my edges are going to face up because they're the edges that I'm going to see. Okay, so that's my inside. Now, if we call this our um, tail board, then because I'm going to cut that, the tail board first, I've already set the thickness. I want to mark or score a line on the inside of my tail board. And the reason I can mark that line all the way through is because it's going to get covered by my pin board as it runs through there. The other side is different. On the outside of this, which is if it was a drawer or a box, we're going to see the joinery in here. I don't want to scribe my line all the way through because otherwise I see those scratch lines from the marking gauge or the cut lines. So we're going to do that soon. All right, so I've got this line here. If you can't see it, I'll just drop a pencil in there. There we go, a bit easier to see. And I also want to return that because coming back to the drawing, so my tail board has these shoulders removed from here. So I want to mark, continue that line from the marking gauge around the outside, around the, the edges, here and here. All right, so now I've marked out basically where that tail board's gonna run in here. Now I need to mark what my dovetail separation is. So because I've run, on the drawing, I've run three dovetails, then I'm gonna do the same here. So it doesn't really matter how many dovetails we run in there. Um, we're, we're basically looking for the greatest mechanical strength, but we're also looking for, well, what I'm looking for in efficiency is the least amount of dovetails that I can cut so that I can cut this quicker. Okay, so for me, there's no point, unless I'm doing something totally decorative, there's no point in putting 10 dovetails in there and doing, you know, five times or 10 times as many cuts as I need to. So I'm gonna lay three out in here. So what I do to lay them out is first, first of all, what we need is our, these pins, if this is a pin, so in the pin board, this is a pin. 
pin. This here is a half pin. Okay, so my half pin size from here to here, I want to determine what is that size. Now, really, again, it comes down to function. Grab another marking gauge, okay, because I've, I've got this one set at my thickness. I need to use that when I do my pin board because it's the same thickness. I'm going to leave that set. Look, if you only had one, then you would just set it up twice. Fine. Or we could just pencil these lines. It wouldn't really matter because we're only setting one. And the reason why I mark it this way is because typically I'm doing, so if I'm doing a bank of drawers, I'm doing multiple dovetails. So it's not just the one joint. If it was just the one joint, I could just do this with a pencil. Okay, so the thickness of that half pin, as a general rule, it's half the thickness of the stock. Okay, so there's about half the thickness of the stock. I'm going to mark that on the end grain here. And that's on both sides. Okay, so it's a bit of a balancing point between, I guess, form and function. If, if that's too small, then those become weak on the pin board. If they're too big, then they look chunky and you've, you've got a little bit too much, you know, un, unsupported wood on the corners. Okay, so that, I'm pretty happy with that. I could probably go less, but let's leave it at that. Now, if I'm going to mark out three equal sizes through here, I could measure that, but then I need to measure the gap or the size of the pins between those, or I could use a divider, a set of dividers, and walk out those distances. So now I'm going to demonstrate how I use dividers to mark out an even number of dovetails. Now this only applies to an even amount of dovetails. So if I was going to go, I don't know, two, two large dovetails and a very small one, then this wouldn't work. Okay, then I would think of another way to, to mark it out. But for even symmetrical dovetails, this work, works really well. Okay, so now because I want to put three in there, I'm going to guess, just moving this out, and I'm going to guess what this distance is here. Okay, so say that's, drop that into that knife line, walk it out one, two, three. I'm just shy of that line. Okay, now I want to run larger than that because whatever's left past this line will be the size of my pin. So I've just adjusted that out a little bit, drop it into that knife line again, one, two, three, happy enough with that. So you can see there that that's about four mil past that line. Now that I'm happy with that size, I'm going to put a definite point, one, two, I don't need to point that, and then drop back into this line this half pin line from here and walk it back the other way. One, two, and then it'll be the same distance off here. And if we take a measurement from there, all of these guys will be the same size. So that's about 31 and a half. That's about 31 and a half. That's about 31 and a half through there. Okay, so I've got equal sized um, tails through there. Now what I want to do with that is just square these lines across. These are square because the edges are square. But if I square these lines across here... Now sure, I can use a knife to mark this out for accuracy. But because the pin board is going to be a result of the tail board, I don't need to be that accurate here. So it's just an aesthetic that I'm creating here with this line. So. That's why I just run a pencil line. So now I've got my equal sizes. So that's equal, equal, equal through that. Now I want to basically run my angle of my dovetails through here. Now, what is that angle? Um, typically, I'm running that as, as a one is to six relationship. So if we come back to the paper, and if I run, let's draw it on here. If I've got an axis point there, and I walk out, I'll just change this dimension, don't need it again for this. If I was going to walk out six parts on one line, one, two, three, four, five, six, there's six, there's one, then that angle that forms between there and there is one is to six through there. So that's what that 1 is to 6 refers to. What is that angle? It's about 10 degrees. Now, why is it that angle? Well, 
And why do we use dividers to work out what that angle is? It's because I don't need an angle measuring device to, to, to basically measure that angle. So I can just walk it out with my dividers. Because I'm marking out with my dividers, I can walk it out with my dividers and then I know what that angle is. From here, I can set up an adjustable square to mark that angle. Now, because I cut dovetails all the time, I've made up these, this dovetail square. So that, I've just stamped that as a six on here, on both sides. And, um, can we see that? And then I've just cut these angles to that same one is to six angle there. So I can just reference that off this plate. So let's just, I'll show you how this works. So here's my top line here. Now, all I do is align that with the square at the top and mark that between those lines right down to that knife line that I created before. So there's one side and here's the other side and this is why I've got a left and right function on here so I don't have to turn the dovetail square around. Alright, so there's my marks. Always mark out the waste area, that's what I'm going to remove from there. This being the inside. Then on the outside, I haven't got any line here yet, so I'm just going to project these long. Project my pencil lines long. Alright, and then with the marking gauge that we set up initially, this guy, which is the same thickness, then I'm going to mark these waste areas here. So this is what I'm going to remove, this. And I'm just going to knife in between those pencil lines. Alright, so now I know that that distance between the end of that tailboard and this shoulder is exactly the same on both sides so I know that that's going to be square when I cut it so that's really important that we mark that with a knife if I mark it with a pencil then that's fine but it's very easy to uh, mark that with a pencil and then run to one side of the pencil line and then you get the, the joint is a little bit out of square the good thing about a knife line is you can drop your chisel into that line when we clean it up and it's dead parallel to the other side all right, so now we've marked that guy out. So, doesn't really matter which side I cut that from because I've marked both sides. So now I'm gonna run this into my preferred vise that I use for dovetailing. A dovetail, I call it a dovetail vise. It's also called a moxen vise. It's not called a French press. <laughs> okay, now, the, the, ability, the good thing about this is, versus my leg vise here on my bench, is that this, this vise is great, but it's, it's low, okay? So it's much easier for me to cut at this height than it is for me to cut at that height. There's no reason why I can't use that, but I love to cut up here because it's better on my back. All right, so if I just set one side of this to the thickness of the wood there, then I can just adjust this on the other side and that way I can move that in and out it's not going to move and I can to, to remove that I just need to pull that in and out from there so I don't need to because it's a twin screw I don't need to move both screws to do so okay so now we're set we're set to cut we're at a comfortable height um, we've got good light so we can see our lines so now we take it take the saw to the cut so what I've got here is my preferred saw um, for this cutting, uh, Japanese style saw. Uh, this is a rip cut. Sorry, one. All right, so rip, the rip cut saw is cutting with the direction of the grain. The fibers are running this way, so I'm gonna cut with the direction of those fibers. Now this dovetail square is really handy for starting this cut because what's critical, what's most critical to, this, to a dovetail joint because it's coming together, it's pushing, the dovetail's pushing in here into the pin board, then this line needs to be square to its face. So if we start off that this isn't square, then we're either going to have 
a joint that's got a massive gap in it or it's going to wedge in and split the other side. So that the a little trick um, that works well is if we use some form of square. Now it wouldn't matter if, if it's the dovetail square or it's it's a, another just a general square. If we start our cut against that square there, like so, once the saw is in the cut, then it is square to its end, and then it's not going to wander because that tooth is not going to move within that cut. So it will stay nice and square. Now what we need to do here. And now this is where it comes, where it takes practice. You know, if I want to cut that consistent one is to six line, I need to practice these cuts because it's a freehand cut. Sure, I can use my dovetail square to guide it, but all I'm going to do is bark up the edge of this, okay? And if that was, I don't know, if that was some kind of metal, then my tooth's going to cut that. So I'm just going to freehand cut this down to that line. And it doesn't matter if I wander off the line. I'm not concerned if I cut here we go, see if we can cut it. I assume so, it's to do with strength. But... It is to do with strength. All right, so what I'm doing, if you notice that the way that I use this saw is the shoulder is aligned with the back of the saw, okay? And I'm just pulling in a straight stroke on the handle here. So, so that, I don't want to be cutting in back and forward like this because that's going to give me an uneven cut through here. So I want to be able to draw that saw back through that cut and keep that as a continuous line. Okay, so, and then my, my feet are sort of just comfortably spaced apart here, and I've pr probably got one foot forward if I'm cutting, if I'm right-handed. I've got my left foot a little bit forward, just for posture. And then I've just sort of, I've got a bit of an eyeball over the line. So, if I run that down to my line, I don't know what that looks like on your side, it looks pretty good on my side, versus that line. Right, so I've just come down to that line, I don't even know if that's overcut or undercut feels pretty good, good on this side. Then I've cut my first side and then I want to cut my next angle because I've sort of got that set in muscle memory. I want to cut my next angle the same way. So start off the cut with the saw, uh, with the dovetail square. And then pretty soft hands on the saw. Okay, let the saw do the work. How are we looking? Pretty good? Do the next cut. You're not even looking on this side. I look on this side all the time to see if I'm going too far. Alright, that one's wandered off a little bit, but I don't care. Okay, that one's probably off the line a little bit there. That's pretty pretty good. Pretty good? Oh, uh, yeah, I can see what Tiny, just a tiny little bit on that side of the line, I think, yeah. according to this side. Now I want to cut this other side of the line. So it's the same principle but in reverse, okay, so I'm cutting the other angle. Still the same starter. Don't know how my line's going there, looks pretty good here. Pretty Over, good? Overcut, badly. Overcut, is that it there? And you're not an angle. That's interesting. You did really badly on that cut. Terrible cut. <laughs> We're not gonna edit that out. <laughs> How's that one? Overcut again. It's fine. Even Batman makes mistakes. Seriously, it's fine. <laughs> Terrible cuts, but that's okay. All right, so. We're good? All right, so all our vertical cuts are done now. Now what I want to do is I want to separate these shoulders. Now, I can use a cross cut saw on this cut, or I can just run my rip cut, because it's such a small cut, just run that rip cut down, and separate that corner. How well we're pretty good on the line. So good. Flick it over, do the same thing. Doing the same principle with the square, because that's going to start straight. Happy? Pretty good? Alright, now we need to go to the chisel, and we need to remove 
this waste material out of here. Now, because I'm undercut on this side, should be the same on the other side, pretty much, um, then I don't really care, okay, because that's transfer, going to be transferred onto the other piece and I'm going to cut that out to suit. So, what we need to do is try and remove this waste before we hit this line here because the chisel, just the nature of the chisel, because of its wedge shape, if I cut that that cut directly into there, all it wants to do is wedge down into that cut and I'm going to overcut that line. So it's just going to wedge down, the resistance is on the bevel side of the chisel and it's going to force that chisel down into here. So I need to remove this material first. So what I want to do is I want to set a chisel, I've got like a quarter inch chisel here, or a six mil chisel, and I want to make sure my chisel is less than the size of that dovetail because otherwise I'm going to mark up these shoulders. Okay, and I'm, and I'm going to hit probably a mil away from this line and remove that waste material first. And then I'm going to do a second cut and, and run it right into that groove, right into that knife line and just clean up that shoulder so it's nice and clean. So this is where a really good solid bench comes in handy. All right, so um, a solid bench is really going to be handy because we've got bulk here and it's not going to vibrate as much. And actually, we're, we're, the greatest benefit, even so, that we're going to have is to cut this directly over a leg. You know, if, if your bench is a bit ordinary, try and cut over a leg so you've got direct transfer to the floor. So I'm using a hold down here. It just, I mean, I can use a clamp and that's fine, but a hold down is really good because I don't have to put a clamp across the bench. Um, now, a couple of people in the school are building these benches at the moment and because they just love these benches. Fair call, I'm not going to argue. Alright, so if we look at, if we now look at these, um, the waste areas of here where the dovetails are, or where, where we're removing the pins, then my first cut, bevel side of the chisel is facing towards me, back of the chisel is behind there, and I'm keeping that about a mil away from that knife line. So first cut is to about halfway. So I'm hitting that quite hard. To about halfway. It's that little bit that popped out of there. Well, it hasn't popped out, but that's got compression. And the chisel is sort of wedging into there because of the shape. Same on this side. Remove the hole down. Do the same on the other side. I should quickly say, um why you flip it, why, don't, why you don't go all the way through. Oh yeah, okay. So I flip this board because if I cut all the way through then I'm going to blow out the back. I'm going to create a big chip on the back edge and because I'm seeing both sides of this joint I want to have a clean surface on the inside and the outside so I'm going from both sides. All right. can you see how this is wedged out here? So that's basically wedged into that relief area. Now I want to get rid of that before I cut my second line. So I'm going to remove this out of here. And that wedge should just fall out of there. Just remove that out of there. I'll push it out with the chisel. Push it straight through there. Get rid of it. So now we've removed the waste and you can see here that now we've got clarity through that line. We still haven't hit the shoulder yet but we've got nice clean surfaces here. So now that when we hit that again, run that back into onto the bench, drop the chisel in the knife line and we're looking for this to be square here. Tap that down again into about halfway. Don't want to go all the way through and break out the other side. And if anything, I want to overcut that. So I don't want this cut to be this way because then I've got a peak in the middle of that pin. 
So if anything, I want it to be slightly overcut. And because my chisel's a little bit wider than that pin, then I'm just paring back that corner. That looks pretty good. Nice and clean on there. Drop that back into that knife line there. Should feel this basically fall into nothing. And again. So now, that inside of that tailboard now should be nice and clean. We should have really good clear lines through there. And what I want to check now, we talked earlier about the importance of these lines being square, all these shoulders being square. I want to check now with a, a small sliding square. This is a little die maker's square. Now, not everyone's going to have one of these, but they're super handy for getting inside these dovetails and checking whether that is square. Now, how does that look? Looks pretty square. Happy with that. That's square. This is what's super important. So if this isn't square, it looks pretty good. If this isn't square, then we need to get a chisel in there and we need to pare away those corners, pare away those, those faces, if you like, until that becomes square, okay? Because if that's not square, then we're gonna get a dodgy joint. All right, there's a classic example of one that falls away. Look at that. Like, it starts off pretty good and then that falls away there. See at the base of the dovetail, there's a bit of a gap. So, and there's a bit of an indicator here, right? So on my side of the cut, it looked pretty good, or whoever side of the cut that was. And then the blade, the flex of that really skinny blade that I use in the dovetail saw, it flexed in, and it's a little bit of a, a material here. So if I grab a wider chisel, and now to pair that away, it's high here. What I want to do is lay on the area that is square, and then the chisel should tell me, see how that's where the chip's coming from there? Or the shaving? It's coming off the area that's high. So I just push that down until that meets. So that should be pretty close. Let's check that for square. Yeah, pretty good. Shadow's a bit weird. Yeah, it looks good, happy there. So that's what we want on every surface. That side's good, happy with that. So I'm happy with that. I'm ready to use that now to mark my tailboard. We could also mark, I think it's a good idea to mark now, you know, if we were doing a box, it'd be a really good idea to mark which joints, we've got our, our edges facing up, we've got our faces facing in. Let's call this joint A, and let's call this joint A. At least I know where they're gonna come back together. So if I had, you know, one, two, three, four on my box corners or whatever it was, at least I know where they're gonna to go together. Okay. Now, this guy here is gonna get marked on there. Now I need to be able to hold this straight. Okay, so I'm gonna drop that back into my dovetail vise here. And generally I'll just mark that a little bit proud. I'll just sit a little bit proud on my dovetail vise here. And I've got a, a piece of wood here which is pretty much matching that height so that I can lay that directly on here, so that is square, make sense? And then align that, that little ledge there, align that with there, okay, so that keeps it nice and square. Yeah? Now there's a couple of ways we can approach this. I can just use, now what I've got here is a marking knife, okay, this is a I think it's, it's just an uh, arrowhead marking knife. I'm not sure what they call it. Um, but pri in principle, what we've got is a flat face and we've got a beveled face. So the beauty of this, the reason I like these types of knives are is that they're left and right. 
Now I can certainly get a left and a knife handed left and a right handed knife um, or I can use a just any kind of knife but I've got to be careful that this straight projection through here isn't at some form of angle and when I've got a bevel on my blade I'm not guaranteed that I'm going to cut that line. Now I reckon it's beneficial to I don't know whether you've ever seen, you know, if you follow dovetail makers, but if you've ever seen them lay some masking tape over this end, I think it's a good idea. And the reason for that is that if we cut through the tape, then what we're going to be left is the areas that, um, that are going to remain. So that acts as a fence for that cut. So let's do that width, because usually I'll, that's how I teach people to, to cut. So let's do that. Right, so just, just some blue masking tape. It doesn't need to be blue. I'm just running that flush. <laughs> Actually, you know what it should do? I haven't marked the inside of that. Mark the inside of this. Same principle as before, but we're not marking the ends. I just realised I can zoom. Blue tape on the end. What I usually do is just run it flush on the inside. Make sure it's stuck down really well. And then cut the excess off because we need to know where those ends are. Okay, your dovetail... Um, sorry, your marking knife should be really sharp. Alright, so now I've got blue tape on the end of my pin board. I'm going to drop that right down in the vise, so there's just the smallest ledge there. And now we're going to align that directly with the back and directly with the side. Okay, so now that that, I know that that's flush. Got that pick. And now just a bit of pressure here so it doesn't slip. And then the back of that marking knife is flat and I want to lay that flat. Okay, and then I'm just cutting through the tape. Just one nice clean cut through the tape. Both sides. Bevels facing out. Okay. Now, we're removing the tails out of the pin board. Okay, so these are the bits that we want to remove. So now if I just pull those out, the thing I love about using tape is that it creates a shoulder or a fence for the saw. If I just knife alone, then my saw, because the, the saw that I use is so thin, it wants to fall into the knife line and then I've got half the thickness of the saw plate of a gap. Okay, so now what I've got, I've already pre-marked the inside of that with the the marking knife. So if I just give that a pencil line and then from a square point of view I need to square that down down through here totally do a, another be able to do another mini video on hacks to draw straight without a ruler without a ruler yeah you know how you do it with your finger oh like offsets yeah that, that's a good hack it's a great hack. I use that hack all the time at home now. My dad tries to use that hack. No good. Actually, we can do it on here. We can do it on here. Come around this side and we'll do it on here. Because on this side... Now, because I've got the thickness of the tape there, 
then I don't want to use my marking gauge on this side because it's going to be the thickness of the tape away. So what I want to do is just mark that out with a pencil line first and then after I do my cuts, then I'm going to remove the tape and I'm going to knife in those lines so I've got my ledge there for the, for the chisel to fall into. So there's a couple of ways I can mark that. I can just lay the thickness of that board through there and just score that line, which works really well. Or we can just use the finger gauge. So I've got that line there and I've just used my, what's that, middle finger there and just basically score that line, run that line parallel to there. So there's a way of drawing a nice parallel line there. And it's just a guide. Okay, so here's, here's that thickness. And you should see that pencil line under there. Is it there? Where is it? No, it's no, a little it's, bit shy. It's there, it's, it's, <laughs> it's there. pretty it's close. There, it's there. Just as so long as it's not over. Okay, so now I know where to stop. All right, so now from, from this point of view, I don't have my square to guide me through because it's not square anymore. What needs to be square, it needs to be a vertical cut. And the reason why I used to cut my tails first is because the only thing I really need to concentrate on here is getting that straight cut up and down, whereas before I need to also cut at an angle. I need to cut it square and at an angle, so it's two things to consider at once. So I can adjust my tail board easily with a chisel, like I, did, like I showed you. This one's not so easy to adjust. Okay, so, so long as I get these cuts straight up and down. All right, so I'm using that the tape as a guide for the saw, getting the saw started. And if you're unsure of what this angle is, then not a bad idea to grab a square and just hold it square into here. That's not the best thing. Just get something that is square and hold it square into here just to check that the saw is straight up and down. Okay, and then you can use that as a guide to get you started and run that one all the way down. So same thing, I'm using the rip cut saw. And I'm using the, the blue tape as a guide. Terrible cuts. Looks pretty good on this side. <laughs> okay, so I've cut those lines. They're beautifully square. Now, because I've cut those lines, I'm going to remove the tape. Make sure that we mark the waist areas. So we're going to remove the tails out of the pin board. This is going to be removed. Cool thing about these lines here is we can pair those to suit if we need to. Marking gauge, and I'm going to mark in between those lines. Nice clear line into there. Right. So now I've got those knife lines, and I've got my cut lines through here. All right, so now we need to remove this material. Same principle as before. We want to find a chisel that is similar width to what that is. Okay, so I reckon a, a 25mm chisel is perfect for that. So it's about 26. So I'm going to go and find a 25mm chisel. Now I'm going to start. I'm going to start on the side that is the smaller side of the wedge here, so that I don't overcut. 
And same principle as before, I want to start that cut because I'm going to remove that uh, waste with the chisel. I'm going to start that cut a mil or a mil and a half or two mil away from that line. See how that forced into that line? It's nearly too far there. That's pretty good though. And then, because there's so much more resistance here, then what I'm going to do is turn that chisel over and I'm going to cut, pop that waste, pop the waste out of there. So that will just fall away. The other way we could do this if you had a bandsaw or a drill press, we could just remove that material with a bandsaw. Like, you still wouldn't go to the line, but we could just hog out the majority of that material with the bandsaw, and then I wouldn't have to work my way with the chisel, you know, so aggressively. So the same thing as before, we're, we're coming into halfway. Alright, so that's about halfway on that material. It's time to put a dog behind it. Yeah. It's time to put a dog behind it. Behind there. Is the Better? marking? Terrible form. Same principle. Alright, so here, because of the wedge shape, I'm just going to run that right in the middle of that cut. Same principle as before. Remove that waste. Don't need to worry about that because it's run to the knife line. And a couple of these cuts through here. So there's that waste removed. Same onto here. Do the next cut exactly the same way. beauty of the knife line. That one's gone. Alright, so that, that waste material is now loose into there. Now because I'm on this side, I might as well finish it off. I'm going to run this into halfway, drop it into the knife line. Same thing as before, square that chisel up, drop that into halfway, same. Now I don't have the resistance on that chip so it's just falling away. Turn it up. Drop that into the knife line. Pretty much fall all the way through. You should hear it and feel it click into the knife line. So now what we're looking for, I want to pair this last little bit away back into here. And I'd probably prefer to do that on, I suppose it doesn't really matter, but I'd probably prefer to do it on the dovetail vise rather than on the bench, just so that I can see what I'm doing. So I'll bring it over to here. Grab a, a nice sharp chisel and just pair that away out of that corner. The rest of those look pretty good. Yeah. I was okay. on this part though. So it should be fine. We can yeah. always stitch a bit in. Alright, so. Moment of truth. The moment of truth. 
the all important fit. So face sides in, really important here that we don't mess this up. Okay, face side in, edge facing out, A faces A. Okay, so I could try and put that in there. It'll probably fit pretty well because, you know, we're symmetrical, but all right, let's drop it in. Good start. A little rubber mallet, tap it in there. Not bad. Hairline gap there. Not completely happy with that. The rest of it's pretty good. Let's address this side here. Looks pretty good. There's probably a little bit of junk in the corner there that we can remove out of there to, to basically close that gap up there. Very happy with that flush there. And I reckon that's pretty good. So if I check that for square, that should run in nice and square into there. Happy with that square. Looks really good. Job's done. The end.